Gate design and placement are key factors in mold design. In the first part of this lesson, we will learn about subgate, also called tunnel gate systems, specifically round and oval designs. In this lesson, you will learn when and why subgates are used in mold design, how different gate designs and sizes affect required injection pressures, why injection pressures and clamp tonnages for different gates may not show similar results, how to evaluate shear rates through different gate styles. Generally, subgates are used in combination with cold runner systems that are placed in the main parting line of two plate molds. Both conventional all cold runner systems and hot to cold combination designs are options with subgates. A hot to cold design generally uses a hot center drop or a manifold system to eliminate the need for a cold sprue and cold runners, to save material, and to reduce the opening stroke of the mold. Sub or tunnel gates are automatically degated systems. The most commonly used subgate designs are either pointed into the A half or B half of the mold. The subgate pointed into the A half will be degated by the mold movement, while the subgate pointed into the B half by the ejection system movement. Subgates need to be relatively small to be automatically detached from the part with minimal gate vestige and no surface damage to the part. Subgate size is generally between 25 to 60 percent of wall thickness at the gating location and as short as possible. The most common gate styles are oval, round, and D shape. In addition to gate size, the approach angle is an important factor as well. Issues for consideration are wall thickness of the part, polymer materials, shear sensitivity, and the stiffness or brittleness of the polymer material used. Temperature is another consideration with cold runner subgates. Cold runners that are at higher temperatures during the ejection process will result in materials that are more flexible and therefore easier to degate, while lower temperatures will have the opposite effect. The ejection functionality of a subgate cold runner system must also be considered. Ejector pins should not be placed too close to a subgate, as the runner and subgate need some flex for proper ejection from the mold. The material well above the ejector pin should allow the subgate to be ejected clear of the steel and should also clear the ejector pin. Allowing sufficient flex guidance of the main runner system will prevent the runner from bending and the subgate from potentially getting stuck in the mold. For this lesson, we will evaluate oval and round subgate designs. Our focus will be on shear rates, pressure, and clamp tonnages for the two different gate styles in three sizes. The designs are shown on screen. The part will be molded in an unfilled PBT material. Beginning with the filling animation, here you can see part fill from the gate to the sidewalls and then finishing in the corners. Next, let's review the injection pressure requirements for our three examples. Here you can see the pressure requirement for the dual oval subgate design with a 0.15 mm gate. The pressure graph indicates that there is a spike of 155 megapascals which is a result of the small gate. The required pressure at fill is 137.5 megapascals. The next example with the dual round subgate and larger 0.5 millimeter gate also shows a pressure spike of about 155 megapascals due to the small gate. Here, the required injection pressure has dropped to 120 megapascals. Finally, the pressure requirement graph for the dual round subgate with the largest gate size of 1 mm indicates a much smaller pressure spike of about 50 MPa. The required injection pressure has also dropped to about 70 MPa. 
Comparing the three injection pressure requirements on this graph, you can see the similar pressure spikes through the gate for both smaller gate sizes. The largest gate example of 1 mm has a spike that would be considered acceptable. Let's look at the clamp tonnage behavior for our three examples and how it compares to the injection pressure that we saw on the last slides. Would you expect the clamp tonnage behavior to show similar results as pressure requirements? The answer is no. Here you can see that during the filling process, the clamp tonnage results are quite similar. Although slightly higher for the smaller round and oval gates, it is not significant difference. Why are we seeing this behavior? Injection pressure behavior for the three examples is more influenced by gate size. The pressure in the runner is much higher inside the smaller gates, but not inside the part. If the pressure during filling is not actually different inside the part, the clamp tonnage is only influenced by the pressure inside the runner. And since the runner has a small projected area, the clamp tonnage behaviors are similar. Our last analysis in this lesson is shear rate. Shear rate is directly linked to the size, cavity filling velocity, and number of gates. Excessively high shear rates may cause damage to polymer molecular chains, which will degrade the material properties. The three gate runner designs and associated shear rate results are shown on screen. The first two examples with the smaller gate sizes have a maximum shear rate of about 1 million reciprocal seconds while the larger gate is 250,000 reciprocal seconds, a significant 75% reduction. This concludes gates, lesson 3a, round and oval dual subgates. In this lesson you learned when and why subgates are used in mold design, how different gate designs and sizes affect required injection pressures, why injection pressures and clamp tonnages for different gates may not show similar results. How to evaluate shear rates through different gate styles. Evaluating gate type and size is an important factor in achieving successful mold design. As we saw in this lesson, smaller gate sizes will result in higher injection pressures and potentially material degrading shear rates. Determining an appropriate gate size will optimize the molding process window and guarantee high-quality molded parts.